types of forces. We have two category for forces. First, we have fundamental forces. And second, we have non-fundamental forces. So let's have first the fundamental forces. So under this fundamental forces, our first type of force is gravitational force. So aside from the three law of motions, Newton also provided a coherent understanding of the gravitational force. Newton's law of universal gravitation states that every particle in the universe exerts an attractive force on every other particle. A particle is a piece of matter, small enough in size, to be regarded as a mathematical point. For two particles that have masses m1 and m2 and are separated by a distance r, the force that each exert on the other is directed along the line joining the particles and has a magnitude given by F is equal to G times M1 times M2 over the square root of R, where the symbol G denotes the universal gravitational constant, whose value is found experimentally to be 6.674 times 10 raised to negative 11 Newton meter squared per squared kilogram. So this gravitational force explains the rotation of the moon on Earth. Same with the rotation of Earth around the sun. So weight is also computed according to this law. So using this universal gravitation law, weight is equal to g times the mass of the earth times the mass of a body of any body on the surface of the earth over the radius squared of the earth which will give us mass times g or the gravitational pull where in g is equal to 9.80665 meter per second squared or simply for us to um, easily memorize when we are uh, using this constant in problem, we simply use 9.81 meter per second squared. So that's why a body that on the surface of the earth or close enough at the surface that we may regard that the radius of the earth is almost equal when it's on the surface. So we will arrive with this weight is equal to mass times gravitational pull. That's why this formula is not applicable when a body is already, already at high elevation that this ratio will be disregarded. So this also the formula we use in solving or getting the gravitational pull when a body is on moon or an other planet. So the second fundamental force is what we call strong nuclear force. So the strong nuclear force plays a primary role in the stability of the nucleus of the atom. So this force what hold or binds the nucleus of an atom, the neutron and protons.
So this force determines the stability of an atom. So, and the third fundamental force, we have electroweak force. So electroweak force is a single force that manifests itself in two ways. The first manifestation is the electromagnetic force that electrically charged particles exert on one another. And the other manifestation is the so-called weak nuclear force that plays the role in the radioactive disintegration of certain nuclei. So electromagnetic force binds the atoms. So this is the force that holds the atoms in a compound or in a molecules. So uh, this is why, uh, so when this force is being released, so it gives us the chemical energy, which converted to other usable energy, such as electrical or heat energy. While this weak nuclear force, this weak force in the radioactive decay, unlike the strong nuclear force, is um, the reason for the, the decay of an atom of a radioactive element such as uranium, plutonium, or radium. So this force, when being released, is what we call nuclear energy that being converted to other form of energy such as electrical or heat energy. Now, let's go on with the non-fundamental forces. So we have three non-fundamental forces that we have already introduced in the first video. So first, we have normal force. So the normal force is one component of the force that a surface exerts on an object with which it is in contact, namely the component that is perpendicular to the surface. So normal means perpendicular. So in our first illustration or first figure, we have here the weight of the, of the object, which is 15 Newton. And we have exerted a force of 11 Newton, which will result to an equal and opposite direction force, which is equal to 29 with 26 Newton. So this is our normal force. So this is our normal force of 26 Newton. So it obeys the third law of motion. Same with this second figure, we have a force of 4 Newton being exerted on the body to lift this object. And the weight of the body is 15 Newton, which will result to 11 Newton normal force. So the second non-fundamental force we have is tension force. Forces are often applied by means of cable or ropes that are used to pull an object. So in this situation, such as in this figure, we say that the force T is applied to the box because of the tension in the roof. So the word tension is commonly used to mean the tendency of the, of the roof to be pulled apart. In accordance with the third law of motion, the box applies a reaction force to roof. So the reaction force has the same magnitude as T but opposite in direction. In other words, a force negative P acts as the left end of the roof and tend to pull it apart. The third and fundamental force we have is frictional force. So when the object moves or attempts to move, to move along the surface, there is also a component of the force that is parallel to the surface. So this is what we call frictional force or simply friction. 
So surface that appear to be highly polished can act actually look quite rough when examined under a microscopic microscope. So in this microscopic contact point, we can see that at this point, the molecules of the different bodies are close enough together to exert a strong attractive intermolecular force on one another, leading to what are known as cold weld. So frictional forces are associated with this welded spot. But the exact details of how frictional forces arise are not well understood. So there are two types of frictional force. We have static and kinetic. The magnitude Fs of the static frictional force can have any value from zero up to a maximum value of Fs max. So as we can see in the graph, this is M Fs max, which is the maximum. So depending on the applied force, in other words, Fs is uh, less than or equal to the maximum static, static frictional force. So the equality holds only when Fs attains its maximum value, which is Fs max is equal to this formula, where this one, this constant, is what we call coefficient of static friction. And this is our mag uh, the normal force. So as we can see in this illustration, as the force exerted on the box is increasing, the, the static frictional force is also increasing up to its maximum value. So we can see that this box is still not moving. So once it is moved, then we're going to have the kinetic frictional force. So So kinetic friction opposes the relative sliding motion. Take note sliding motion. If you have ever pushed an object across a floor, you may have noticed that it takes less force to keep the object sliding than it takes to get, to get it going in the first place. In other words, the kinetic frictional force is usually less than the static frictional force. As you can see in the figure, yes, as the force is being started on the box is increasing up to a point um, big enough that will lead for the box to move forward. Yes. And we can see here in the graph the friction that Fk is now much less than the static frictional force. That makes for the cart to move um, slightly easier compared for the point that you have to push first or to at the point that the box have to start to move. So th that is, is that the difference between static and kinetic frictional force. So kinetic frictional force will be constant along the way as long as the, the force being started is in constant also. So let's have an example problem. A skier is standing motionless on a horizontal patch of snow. She is holding onto a horizontal toe rope, which is about to pull her apart forward. The skier's mass is 59 kilograms, 
and the coefficient of the static friction between the skis and snow is 0 0.14. What is the magnitude of the maximum force that the tow rope can apply to a skier without causing her to move? So take note of that. We are looking for the maximum force for the tow rope can apply to the skier without causing her to move. So meaning we are dealing with the static frictional force. That's why we have a coefficient of static friction. So at this force, at, I'm going to exert this magnitude of force, the skier will not move. Unless if if this, the magnitude is being increased further, then the skier will start to move. So how are we going to solve for the magnitude of the force? So using um, the, new, uh, the third law of motion, our force F, which is the being applied on the tow rope, must be equal to the frictional force. At its maximum. We're in this Fs max is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So we have to identify the normal force. So normal force is equal to the weight. Wherein weight is equal to mass times g. Therefore, we're going to have the static friction, the coefficient times mass times the gravitational pull. So we can solve now for this problem by substituting the given values. So the coefficient of static friction is 0. 14 times the mass of 59 kilograms times gravitational pull of 9.81 meter per second squared. So compute this for this for this um equation therefore the magnitude of the force is 81.03 kilogram meter per second squared wherein the unit conversion of this is in newton so this is our magnitude of the maximum force that a tow rope can apply to the skier without causing her to move. So this it is directed to the right as a presented illustration. So meaning if the force being applied is increased a little, let's say 81.031 or 81.04, then the skier will start will start to move forward. Okay, so now let's check your understanding by solving this problem.